Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much for your presentation. Uh, so thank you, of course, to the Atlantic Telecommunication Authority for inviting us and, and also for the organization and, of course, for this conference, which has been very, very interesting and useful. I would like to start by saying that uh, this morning session, not today's, but not, not that last one, but the first one was a bit depressing because we were hearing so much about uh, the gloomy possibilities for the access for telecommunication, the gloomy possibilities for fiber optics and so on. And I would like to start by saying that we have done, uh, from the telecommunication world, we have been able to do quite a number of useful things and impressive things. I, I have covered here a, a few of them. I'm not going through them uh, because clearly we are a bit late. But, uh, for example, just to mention one is that, for example, in India it's much easier to get a mobile phone than a, a tap of water. This is perhaps something surprising. But uh, there are other things. Uh, Mr. Economitus also talked about the, the power of the social network that are bringing people and people here. And uh, the, the, the the phenomena of the Wikipedia and the phenomena of YouTube. I think those things were, as it was said, were unthinkable some years ago. So we are really have something to, to be proud of. But on the other hand, it's true that uh, the telecommunication industry is facing a sort of crisis. We had a crisis also in the year 2000, but we were able to, to overcome that crisis via uh, coming together via consolidation, via investing in other countries, via focusing on broadband and particularly on mobile broadband. And I think that now we are in the, in the year 2012, uh, coinciding with the general crisis, we have also to face a, face a crisis of the telecommunication industry and we have to, to find, we have to look for new sources of revenue. And this is something that we are uh, taking very seriously in Telefonica and that is the reason why we have created a new branch, a new part of Telefonica, let's say, that is called Telefonica Digital or whatever you want to call it, uh, which, whose mission is essentially trying to find new sources of revenue, trying to find what are we going to do to have a new S-curve, to have a new uh, revenue source that will uh, allow us to go further into the future. So we are looking into many, many, many fields. We are looking into, into cloud, of course. We are looking into new platforms. We are looking into video. We are looking into new terminals. We are looking into new platforms and, 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 and new solutions. And we are also looking uh, into one thing. Perhaps it's not uh, the most important one, but it's very significant, which is the car. The car, which is uh, definitely uh, something that we, I mean, this is, the car is a place where we spend quite a lot of time in our lives. We, we particularly in many places, we, we have to spend about two, three hours every day in a car or in a bus, and sometimes we are very bored there because we are in a traffic jam and, and so on. Sometimes the car is a dangerous place because we have just suffered an accident or we have uh, some problem with the car. So definitely there is a place, uh, we think that the car is a place where ICT uh, telecommunication could help to improve it and to have something better. And, but before we get uh, too excited about uh, the, this new car and the possibilities, I think it's really worthwhile having a relatively look of what are the opportunities, how is the world of the car, what are the real user needs, how, where, where, whether there is a market or not, and what services are we needing. And, and, and essentially the, the most difficult question is what is the telecommunication operator is going to do about that? So um, the first thing we have to realize is cars are very different from mobile communication or from communication as a whole. I mean, clearly, when you are driving a car, you are having an exercise, an analog exercise. You are driving, you are using the wheel, you are uh, using your feet, uh, you are using your pedal, you are using the gear. It's a sort of physical experience. In fact, it's, it's, it's really a sport. I mean, nowadays, nobody realizes that when you are in the middle of a traffic jam. But at the beginning, driving a car was something funny. I mean, people really enjoyed it. It was something very, very uh, amusing. But if you compare it with the mobile, if you compare it with the terminal, it is different, definitely. I mean, when you are making an email, definitely this is not an exercise and, unless you try to do it very quickly. Uh, but it is, it is really a different world. Uh, also, that the car industry is very different from the telecommunication industry. Normally, you don't buy a car every year. You buy a car every 10 years or at least seven, seven years. And the most important thing is whenever you buy a car, you don't change it anything except put more fuel and maybe you change all the oil. But you don't change anything in the car. 
Whereas if you have a telephone, you are all the time, at least in a telephone like uh, any smart telephone, you are all the time putting new application on it. You are all the time changing the, the, the application. You are all the time changing the experience of the, of the telephone. Uh, also, clearly, uh, the, 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 car is, uh, the car industry is much more focused on things such as logistics. Is they, they, the industry is really focusing on cost. They are trying to, to have a very low-cost product with a significant margin to sell it to the, to the user. It's, it's, it's a good example of a market economy. You are selling goods to the people. Whereas the telephone is quite a different thing because you are here focusing much more on managing the network in, a, in an appropriate way and trying to get new revenue sources as, as you go along. So it is, as I would say, it's a much more example of this new, let's say, uh, services economy, this information economy. So we need to bring together these two worlds in order to have something which is useful for everybody. And the first thing you have to do is have a, have a look at the user. There are some people, as we call them here, car lovers, who really like the cars. And they are proud of it. They are all the time talking about cars. Normally they are male. They are all the time talking about how beautiful the car is, how powerful the engine it is, and so on. There are other people who do not like cars at all, and, and they really are only worried about getting to one place to another. There are also people who like the mobile phone or like the tablet or, or like the, the, the ICT and, and people who do not like this at all and, and just want to get communication uh, going. So we have four possibilities, at least four possibilities, of four different market sectors that we have to address. In some cases, for example, the technological enthusiasts, the people who like the car and who like the mobile phone, they want to have, uh, let's say, a mobile phone, I mean, a tablet inside the car. They want to have all the applications there, they want to, to really have a tablet there, they want to, to, to really use everything they can imagine into the car. Whereas the people who really like the car, they, they are on the contrary side. They do not want to be distracted. They really want to concentrate on driving. They want to concentrate on, on really the physical experience rather than uh, getting information or just rather getting, um, I mean, uh, music or something like that. Uh, so we have to two different, quite a different market from one or the other. There is also quite a lot of people, for example, who do not like car and who do not like a telephone, no, a telephone or tablets at all. And those people, we call them DIFM or do it for me, are the people who really want to have something simple. They, they are not interested in, in driving the car, they are just interested to get into a place and they are not interested in, in just showing off how beautiful their tablet phone is, but rather communicating with their friend or, or, or whatever. So in those cases, we need to focus much more on simplification, on doing things easy, doing, providing simple solutions for them. So this is, uh, this is just an example of, of the market segment that we could have. And the next thing we have to ask is whether, after all, is there any money on, on it? I mean, uh, of course, if we go to the uh, consultants and we ask them whether there is money, they always say yes. This is, this is always the case. They always say, okay, is money in, in fiber optics? Yes. Is money in cloud? Yes. Is money in the car? Yes. So they are saying yes also in the car industry. There are some figures here that say that maybe we could have around 160 billion in 2020. Okay, let's, let's hope so. Uh, definitely we think that there are a number of reasons why it could happen. The first thing is that the automotive industry is really looking towards cost reduction. So they need to put ICT in order to implement that cost reduction. And the second thing is that the regulations are moving in the right place, uh, are moving in that direction because they are forcing car industry to have uh, let's say more secure and more safer and definitely uh, trying to solve the problem of mobility inside towns and inside uh, roads. So we think that these two tendencies, the fact that the uh, automotive industry is reducing costs and, reduce and increasing efficiency, and the fact that there is a, ten a, a pressure from the public authorities to, to have safer and um, um, more uh, mobile cars, is, is moving in the right direction to have a business on the ICT in the car. So, once we settle that we have money in the car industry, the next thing is to understand what we can do. And uh, the first thing we can do is divide the applications into two main groups. What we call the business to business part, 
which is really providing information from the car, not to the final user, but a number of industries who can profit from it, and the business to, to the user, I mean to the, the communication business to user, which is the consumer, which is providing the information to the person who is driving the car. In the first case, we have quite a number of, of possible applications. For example, this famous stolen vehicle uh, tracking, which unfortunately, I would say unfortunately, is very popular, for example, in some South American countries because the, the rate of, of stolen vehicles is, is very high. So this is something which is uh, a, a market opportunity, trying to, to see where your stolen car is, and maybe you can go there and recover it. But of course, other possibilities is this, possi this idea of the usage-based insurance, this idea that if you are drive carefully and you are not uh, using the car uh, in, in, in strange places to pay less insurance than other people who do in a different way. There are other possibilities, for example, the, the, the idea of collecting uh, taxes or collecting tolls when you are driving, and, and of course all the things related to um, fleet management or to remote diagnosis of your car, telling you in advance or telling your company in advance, telling uh, your company that uh, some part of your car is failing. So this, these are some examples of the possibilities that you could have in this business to business application. Of course, when you come to the more known applications such as the business to consumer, uh, are those things related to GPS navigation, to traffic information, to try to avoid the, the traffic jam if you can, which is not normally the case, unfortunately. The, the idea of knowing the point of interest that you, there are around your, the area where you are, and of course, just the possibility of, uh, of giving you information once you are in the traffic jam, well, at least you can get some information about something important or something interesting uh, once you are there. Of course, you have to do it without distracting the driver because, as you know, this is one of the dangers of this, of this thing. And the question then is, uh, what, what about telcos? Why do why we think that telcos should have a play, should have a role there? One thing is clear, I think it's clear, that telecommunication operators have been able to really make money out of something, which was very difficult, to try to make money making something of a big investment and then getting people paying for it every month. So we think that telecommunication operators can have a role because they can invent, and I think today we have been talking a little bit about that, we, we should have be able to invent new business models that would allow to monetize this, uh, this car industry, this car transformation uh, into, into business. Uh, I have just uh, listed here a number of them, six of them, but uh, I am not going to go through them in detail because clearly this is something you have in the end to, to, to really fine-tune yourself. It can go just from advertising uh, into a model of subscription, into a premium model of subscription, or just providing a platform where other people can put the application on top and, and really uh, develop the applications and, and, and then and in this case, the telecommunication operator is just providing the means, is just providing the infrastructure for other people to do that. Just for the start, for example, one, one good example of application is the fact that uh, nowadays uh, the, the European Commission is, is asking the, the car industry to have uh, um, SIM cards in every, in every car in, in, in some years. And, of course, this has to be done in a country. It has to be done in the place where the, country, the car is manufactured. But it has to work all around Europe, all around the world, in fact. So you have to manage a good way of handling this a SIM card uh, movement around, uh, around, the, around the world as the car is moving around. Because, uh, as I say, uh, and I finish with that, uh, this is the real challenge. The real challenge is to turn the car into a business opportunity that would make the, the life, life in general easier, safer, and more enjoyable, and that will bring the car, of course, as I say, into the, the information technology, uh, creating wealth for everybody. And that's it. Thank you very much.